broken restrooms, hot classrooms, and dirty ventilation filters in multiple rooms. Just a glimpse into a larger problem public health inspectors found during recent visits. The result leading to the Guam Department of Education deciding to close both Timuning Elementary and Lyndon B. Johnson Elementary Schools. Both campuses closing with a D rating just as quickly as they opened for the new school year two weeks ago. Parents now scrambling to adjust to the abrupt notice that their children will be online learning. This like caught us off guard. We're like, we didn't realize that they were going to shut down like at the start of the school year this right. early. GDOE parents like Sophia Regis was planning to send their children to school in person for the rest of the week. Today, they instead were left rushing to pick up the hard copy learning materials their kids need to finish the school week. KUAM speaking with a frustrated Regis, who has one child at Timuning Elementary and another at LBJ Elementary School. She says this out-of-the-blue schedule just made things more difficult. For me, it it sucks because I have a third grader here, I have a kindergartner at LBJ, and then we have a two-week-old newborn. So with the online, we're having to work with them on the laptops while dealing with sl sleep deprivation. And I'm gl just glad I'm still on leave from work so that I can help my husband work with my two boys and then take care of the baby. It's a support system needed for remote learning that Regis emphasizes not everyone has. I have coworkers that can't take off work and they don't know what to do with their child now that it's online and they have to be home. So it's very inconvenient for a lot of the parents and a lot of the families because some don't have the support system that others have. The closure leaving many stunned as they thought they had more time. Over the summer, Governor Lulian Guerrero signed off on a bill passed during an emergency session that delayed the compliance mandate for public health sanitary permits to next year. Leon Guerrero then stating the previous law that would have taken effect this year was flawed. But this recent closure has others worried, what if their school fails their health inspection? In response, Guam DOE spokesperson Michelle Franquez tells KUAM, though the law gives us an additional year, we have kept up the momentum with one school visited a week, adding we have committed to one school inspection through April when all schools will be inspected. GDOE is working to be proactive and not wait until the new law is implemented. Meantime, parents are seeing the bigger issue that schools are desperately needing repair, a problem that this LBJ parent, Anthony Kisa, says also falls on the shoulders of the government of Guam to fix. Having the community involved helps a lot, but like I said, the government needs to have our back too. Where's our funding? You know, like where's our updated books and where's you know, where's all the repairs that are needed for these schools? I mean, we have schools that are leaking. We have schools where the ceiling's falling down on students. We have rats running around in classrooms. That's unacceptable, and I cannot believe that the government just stands by and lets it slide. Though both parents are relieved their children won't be attending an unsafe learning environment, both agree that education and government officials have to find a better way than the status quo. Meantime, an email from the Timoning Elementary School principal is circulating, cautioning teachers unable to telework from home to plan for alternate locations as there are no available rooms to work remotely at GDOE headquarters in Tizen. This as inspections of GDOE schools by public health are underway, as only time will tell if the same online fate lies ahead for other campuses. Virtual learning for both Timuning and LBJ will begin on Monday, September 11, until both schools undergo repairs and public health reinspection.